Hey everyone, my name is Fan Yang. I'm the technical marketing engineer for the Cisco CSR1000 router. Today I'm gonna show you how you can turn on the iWire services with CSR on Amazon AWS. So i1, which is intelligent one, is Cisco SD1 offering. So in the traditional one network, uh, customer have multiple branch, they have different uh, resource they want to access, they have their data center, resource they want to access, they want to access their virtual private cloud, and they also have their public cloud like AWS and Azure. And before, it's very hard for customer to manage what are the path control for different applications, if they can go to internet or if they can go to MPS. So with Cisco, I1 services, you will have the full control of your application visibility and then the full control of your application pass. So I1 has four pillows that I explained in the uh, below uh, bullet. So first, uh, you can have your DMVPN, which is uh, based on uh, dynamic GRE. It's more uh, dynamic tunnel based uh, overlay network. And also it will come with the performance routing. So based on different SLA for your application and based on your application category, you can choose like web browsing, HTTP traffic to go through your internet and your voice or business critical traffic to go through your MPIs network. And also it all comes with the application visibility control. So you have layer seven visibility into all the traffic that goes through your network as well as your one optimization like was. The last part is about the secure connectivity you can do with our next generation security should be type of encryption or CWS or even enable zone-based firewall on the router. So to uh, summary, I1 is Cisco SD1 services. And the last but not least important, all of the services I have talked about, you can provision them through the APIC EM, which is our SD1 controller. So today I will walk you through how you can turn around those services on AWS and how you can use your AWS VPC as your I1 branch or I1 hub. Okay, now in my topology you can see uh, we have a cloud data center hub at the Ohio region and we have two branch at the North California region. So typically for the customer, they have multiple resource or multiple VPC in the cloud and they also have their on-prem network. So they will, there will mainly be two uh, connectivity. So one is internet, the other is the direct connect, which is more like a uh, dedicated line. So for those hub, how do they leverage the link? Which path should I take for the internet traffic? Or which application I should put on my uh, direct connect connection? So typically you can do with policy-based routing or static routes like which destination you want to go and you put on which link or based on which type of application type or ACL uh, to do the pass distribution like manually. The alternative way or more intelligent way is you enable the I1 services on your um, AWS network with CSR. So with the APKM to push the config, the CSR will make those path selection automatically based on the performance of the application, latency of the application, uh, the SLA metric of the application. So in my case, in the hub, you can see there are three CSR. So each of the CSR will be uh, running as a border router. So I have border router one, border router two, and I have another CSR working as MC, that's called a mask controller. It basically will push the uh, PFR or the I1 policy to uh, the branch, to the border router and also to the branch router. And also in the hub, as you can see, I have APKM, which is running on AWS, and I have a live action, which will be my network collector or my uh, visualized uh, topology tool to see the path, to see the topology. And also I have the FTP and HTTP server running in my application. Subnet. On the left hand side with the branch, as you can see, I have branch one and branch two. And branch one, during branch one, I will have a CSR running as a branch router. I have a Windows client which will be used uh, in the later demo to show how I, I can access the 
FTP uh, resource and HTTP resource in my hub and what are the paths that will be used for those two applications. And also there is another branch too uh, in my left hand side. So I will use this branch too to demonstrate how we can easily provision the I1 services to this branch. So this is my AWS console. As you can see, I have my Ohio region. You can see I have multiple uh, instances that's running. So basically those two are the border router I've talked about in the topology, which are the CSR. It's running 16.3.3 release. I have another MC. Uh, it's running an old version, but it doesn't matter. So we have another APKM. So this is the SD1 controller. So I'm using the 1.4 release which is the latest release uh, we, we can find on our CCO page. I also have a tool, with a tool VM. So this is my FTP or HTTP server. So on this server, I'm running multiple services. And also the live action uh, 6.x version, which is running on my Windows server. So those are my hub region, if you go back here. So all the virtual machine, all the CSR that's running on the Ohio region. And as I mentioned, I have another two uh, branch, which is in North California region. So if we go back to the North California, we can see I have branch two, one. This is the CSR uh, branch router, and I have another branch two, the, the other CSR. So for branch one, I have a Windows machine, I have a Linux machine that will be used in the demo. So basically, this is my setup. So as I mentioned, I already pro provisioned the router so if we go to our I1 page, just for information, this is our uh, APIC EM enterprise module. This is SD1 controller I will use in this demo. Okay, so if we click the I1 tab, I just click the I1 tab, you will sh sh give you a walkthrough what are the steps you need to configure the I1? So typical, so basically you need to configure the hub side. So let's take a look at the hub side. So this is my, in the first step, you have to use a NetFlow collector. So I'm using the live action. So this is my private IP of the live action. I just put IP here and I put some port number so the live action can see all the uh, network visibility information. That's the certified iOS release. You can just skip that. And this stop the IP address pool. So as you can see, for the generic, I mean, these are used for the DMVP internal. I'm using 192 uh, subnet for the tunnel. And I have two um, LAN sites, which are the branch. Uh, if you take a look at my branch, you will see this is my 20 subnet, this is my 30 subnet. So I add those already in my SD1 controller. For the service provider, as you can see, I have two service provider, MPS and the internet. And if you take a look at our I1 hub, you can see this is my hub configuration. So I have three router. I have one at MC, two border router, and one connect to internet, the other one connect to MPS. And those configuration I've already done before the demo. This is my hub config, and you can just add another hub by a single click and you add those IP and the hub will be provisioned. And also if you want to add another router into the hub, you can just do this. Add to pop, the second router or third router will be added automatically. Okay, so this is my hub config. Uh, as you can see, I have another branch that's configured. So we can take a look at the branch side. So the hub has been configured and I have a branch. So this is my branch, branch one. So it also have MPOS and internet connect, connected already. I put it in the San Francisco location. Okay, so I will use the plug and play protocol, the PMP, we call PMP, to let the APKM discover the second branch. So let's go to the second branch CSR. First, we need to get the IP of the second branch. 
and we can log in to this IP. Okay, so now we are in the branch. As you can see, the config is just basic day zero config, nothing to do with I1. Now, if I go to the config and do PMP profile, I define profile basically for I1. Let's say just I1 profile. I have to put the APKM IP address basically. So I can put IPv4 and the APKM IP address will be this public IP address. And I can put this IP address and do the port 80. So now it will trigger the PMP registration process. And uh, later you will see, if I, if I go back, you will see this newly discovered device. Now it's zero. And during, I think probably one to two minutes, it will show up with one number, like F1. Okay, so it show up here. F1 device discovered. So now what I want to do is I want to provision this site. I just I have to do a refresh sometime. Okay, now you can see the validation status is success. I just click this site, give it the name, let's say branch two, and check the site and do provision. So now it will ask me what topology you have. So I have dual link, I choose and I have the layer two connectivity to the one edge. I have to choose the place. Let me just choose San Jose. And then connect to the hub. I should select one services. So left high side is the internet, right hand side is MPOS. Now I have to configure the IP. I'm using Gigabit One for the internet uh, because this is on AWS, so every virtual machine is behind the net. So I have to check the net. And I have to get the IP. So I have a elastic IP. The first IP is used for the internet and using DHCP. I just use 50 Mac. And the other side uh, will be the second IP. It's also behind night. I'm using static IP. The gateway will be 1.1. And choose 20 Mac. So now I can apply the changes. Oh, sorry. I just, because on AWS, you cannot run any VLAN services. So I just remove all the VLAN here. OK. Now I apply changes. Submit. So now the config will be pushed from the APKM to your branch 2 and also to the hub uh, about the branch 2 config automatically. And after around. Um, probably five minutes or the provisioning will be done and we can revisit once the provision is done. Okay, after a couple of minutes, you can see the branch two that has been provisioned. So two branch has been provisioned and one hub. So which means the provisioning has been done. So now if we go back to the router and we log into the router branch again, we can do show DMVPN. You can see the tunnel to the two hub CSR, the app, and also we can do a show domain one master status to see if all the PFR, you can see the status, they are up, so which means the uh, I1 is, fun is functional correctly on the branch already. Okay, so this is the part I want to show you how we can easily use the I1 app on the APKM to provision a branch. So now let's go to the application um, path selection demo. As you can, as you already see, I have already configured the NetFlow collector, which is uh, in the hub, which is in this step. I've already configured the NetFlow collector, which is live action. So now I will try to log into the live action which is also running on AWS. Let me my password.
Okay, so this is my topology. As you can see, the topology looks the same as the slides, right? Basically, I have two rotor that's working on the hub, two branch. This is my hub, and this is my two branch. Okay. This is basically the, the topology I'm running on, on AWS. And for the um, application path selection, as you can see, I have internet paths, I have MPoS paths. So I define the HTTP to go through the internet and the FTP to go through the MPoS. So how do I define those policies? It's also done through the I1 app. If you go back to the I1 home, you will see there's the third part of administer application policy. So with this configuration, I'm able to define which application to use which path. So if I come here, you can see my web browsing, which is uh, browsing. So it's using internet as primary and MPS as secondary. If you look, take a look at my file sharing, which is FTP traffic, it's using MPS as primary and the internet as uh, secondary. And it checking the application performance uh, in real time. As we previously talked about, we have a Windows Server that's running in branch one while working as a HTTP or FTP client. It will access the resource in hub, which is FTP server and HTTP server. And you will see, based on the PFR policy I push to my edge router on the CSR, the HTTP traffic will go through internet and FTP traffic will go through the MPS or direct connect. Okay, so I have a Windows server that's running. This is a Windows server, it's running on AWS already. And let, let's generate some uh, HTTP traffic. So this is my HTTP page. Okay, I just put Cisco website uh, file there. So let me do multiple refresh. And now let's go back to my lab action. So let's do a refresh. It will take, typically it will take uh, around one to two minutes for those NetFlow data to be pushed to the lab action and the lab action will show up what are the paths it choose for my for my HTTP traffic. So as you can see, this is the internet path and this is the MPoS link. So if we do a refresh, you can see the blue ones actually are the HTTP traffic that's showing in the topology and which is taking the internet path that matches my policy and APK. So now let's generate some if FTP traffic. Let's download the file. Okay, so it will start to download the file from the hub to the branch. So now, after one to two minutes, if we do a refresh, we'll see this path will be taken through the MPS link. Okay, so if now I do a refresh again, you can see the FTP traffic, it had some data, it collected that like I have downloaded around like 16 meg from my hub and it's showing it's taking the it's taking the uh, MPoS link and HTTP traffic is taking the internet link. So in summary, I, this demo gives you a brief idea how you can add up or expand your I1 hub or I1 branch into the cloud with APKM, which is also running in the cloud. And also, you can see the path selection or the PFR that's working with CSR on the AWS cloud. Thanks for watching.